Chapter 1. The Boom. 2020 was the worst year of my mental and emotional health and the best year for my business. I'm a creative. I have one foot in the world of writing and art and expression and one foot in the world of selling knowledge and products and systems online. Um, so I try to have my own creative practice and I also make and sell resources for other creatives. So in 2020, I ran a round of my course, the Story Magic Academy, which is a course for writers. Um, and because so many people were stuck inside and looking for distraction or finally getting around to those creative pursuits that they'd wanted to, to pursue for a while, I sold twice as many spots on that course as I normally did. While in-person businesses were in total crisis, online businesses like mine boomed. Chapter two, the decline. So after that peak in 2020, I saw a slow but solid decline in sales in 2021, 2022, and 2023. Now for a while, this was okay because I had the money from 2020 to keep me going, um, to pay the bills, to keep the business going, um, and allowing me to like work on and try out different things. But things continued to get harder and harder. If you weren't running a business in 2023, the best way I can describe it is that it felt like the trash compactor scene from Star Wars. <laughs> like the walls closing in, things getting tighter and tighter and harder and harder. Um, and I just couldn't find a button to push that would, that would stop it. So I was making less and less money and strategies that I'd relied on for years no longer worked. And I exhausted myself trying new strategy after new strategy and nothing worked well enough to halt the decline in income. And just as an aside here, I am begging you to please not comment on this video uh, with suggestions of what I should have done or what I should try. Like, I know for many people it's well-intentioned, but I really don't want to hear it. Like, I, I promise you, you are not going to be saying anything that I haven't heard before or that I haven't already tried. So um, no business advice, thank you. <laughs> so I started noticing that other creators were struggling too. They were changing video thumbnails um, or titles, which is a sure sign that videos aren't performing well. Um, they were scaling back their businesses or quitting entirely. But nobody seemed to be talking about this and about the fact that the digital economy or the creator economy, or both, seemed to have shifted massively and it was harder than it had ever been to make a living from it. Now, I'm not a very ambitious person when it comes to money. I don't want to make millions or expand into some huge business. Um, my goal has always really just been to make enough money to comfortably pay my bills and to have enough time to pursue my creative projects. Um, the loftiest my financial goals ever got was hoping that I'd make enough money to do some traveling since that's something I haven't been able to do in my adult life. So when I say that I was at the point of making less than half of what I needed to pay myself and keep the lights on, I'm not talking about an extravagant lifestyle here. Um, from the money I made in 2020, I set aside an emergency fund which could cover three months worth of wages and expenses for myself and my man admin manager. And in 2023, I had no choice but to burn through that. Like, it's all gone. <laughs> and there was no prospect of being able to build it back up again. So work became this cycle of rallying myself to create or launch an offering, putting everything I had into it, failing to make the revenue that we needed and then collapsing in stress and disappointment after that um, and then eventually dusting myself off and getting up to try again and repeat and repeat and repeat and every time I got knocked down it got harder to get back up because I burned through more and more of my own resilience and my resources both mentally and financially 
I slipped in and out of depression and anxiety um, several times over the year. And eventually, on the 28th of November, 2023, I sat down, I looked at my finances, I crunched the numbers, and I realised that I was out of options. Um, and I had no choice but to get a part-time job. Chapter 3. The Bust. So I entered a very weird liminal space after this realisation. Um, it triggered this kind of onslaught of grief and depression. Um, without meaning for it to, my work had really filtered into my identity. And despite knowing that the reality of being a creator... See, just there, I even said being a creator, not working as a creator... It's, it isn't as glamorous as people think it is. Um, now, for years, when people find out what I do, they get this look like they're impressed and sometimes even envious. And this has always simultaneously fed my ego and made me kind of uncomfortable. Because, yeah, there are undoubtedly benefits to this type of work. The freedom to work when and how you want. Getting to choose what you make to some extent. Um, getting to do something creative for a living, getting visibility on your work, making a small difference in people's lives. All of these things are great. But there's also a lot of it that's hard too. You have the financial precarity of a gig worker. You can't control if anything you make reaches people or gets lost in the noise of the algorithm. You have no pension, no benefits, no structure to your work days, no time to clock in and clock out. And maybe most importantly, this is the most socially isolating work I've ever done. Still, when you work for yourself online, people think you're cool and successful. And here I was facing the fact that I had failed at it and I was going to have to return to employed work. I felt like I'd given it everything I had and it still wasn't enough. And people were very publicly going to see that I hadn't been able to make it work. This really fucked with my head. <laughs> um, and while I'm incredibly lucky to have a partner and a good counsellor, nobody in my real life does this kind of work. What I was going through was basically completely alien to them, even when I tried to explain it. I felt very alone and terrified for my future. There was also the aspect of this where it made actually doing my work borderline impossible because so much of my online work involves sharing and documenting my real life. This was dominating my life, but I didn't feel able to talk about it yet, both on an emotional level and for fear that it would actually hurt my business and my livelihood even more. Honesty and transparency are my core values. Like, I'm a deeply honest person, basically to a fault, and I find withholding the truth painful. So making work around this elephant in the room became... Yeah, really difficult to the point of almost impossible. Chapter four, the hunt. So I started looking for a job while trying to recover from this 
pit of depression and stress that I found myself in. Most of my jobs before uh, creating online were in coffee. Um, in fact, funny story, the first person to ever recognise me from YouTube was a customer whose table I was waiting in my old coffee job. And it was this very weird experience of being like, oh, wow, thanks so much. I'm glad you like my work. Now, um, what can I get you? <laughs> so I hope that I'd be able to find something in coffee. I got knocked down a few times, um, which was really hard before realising that getting knocked back and being brave enough to get my hopes up again for the next application actually was my job for the time being. It was hard and disheartening and scary for a few months as my money dwindled. I also started to see people finally talking about how hard it had become to make a living as a creator on YouTube or in digital media and online business generally. So I could finally confirm that this wasn't just happening to me, like it wasn't just some personal failing, but this larger trend that lots of people were struggling to navigate. And it was sad, but really validating to hear. I have a bunch of these different bits of content of people talking about this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link them in the description if you're interested. So as this wave of grief and depression started to subside, it was also easier to see the benefits of working part-time more clearly. In the past few years, I'd actually thought about going back to coffee quite a bit. <laughs> um, I missed working in person with co-workers, having built-in social interaction in my week, actually being behind an espresso machine making coffee. It's not a sexy job in the way that being a creator is, but there are a lot of great things about working as a barista. Like basically everyone who's ever worked in hospitality though, I also had some horrendous experiences and I think the fear of going through some of that again is why I didn't actually make that leap until I was forced to. So I was job hunting through December, January and February before I finally found something and I found a part-time job as a barista in a specialty coffee shop that I really liked. Chapter five, the present. So I've been working part-time in my new job for a few weeks now. And honestly, I'm really happy. <laughs> um, I'm under no illusions that it's always gonna feel good. Hospitality can be a hard industry in a lot of ways, as most people know. But I feel very sure that I've managed to land in exactly the right place. And so far, I feel very lucky to have found exactly the kind of barista job that I was looking for. Working online for myself has often felt like being sequestered from the world, like existing in my own little bubble while everyone else is effortlessly connected to other people through their work and their community and their family. So working an in-person job again has felt like re-entering the real world a bit. And that has actually meant a lot to me. Um, it's made me wonder if I'd ever choose to go back to working digitally or remotely full time again. Right now, I wouldn't. Um, you know, obviously I can never know how, thing, how things might change down the line. But right now, working part time in person in coffee and then part time writing and creating feels great. It feels like the perfect balance.
Chapter 6. The Future. This transition has been hard. There is no downplaying that. But I am really looking forward to and already enjoying this next chapter. So I want to tell you a little bit about what that's going to look like or what I think that's going to look like. So two things that I am stepping back from. Um, Firstly, YouTube. I'm burned out, guys. <laughs> like, I've completely scrapped my production schedule. Um, it's become clear that publishing videos regularly is no longer valuable enough to my business to prioritise it so highly anymore. Like, I can't do that and fit everything else around it anymore. Um, so I'm not going to try and stick to any schedule. Um, I'm still going to make videos if I feel like it um, and if I have the time. But generally, that's going to be much lower priority and it's kind of going on the back burner. Um, so, yeah, you're not going to see frequent videos from me in all likelihood. Um, and then the second thing is courses. Um, so, yeah, I've run several online courses in the last few years. Um, I'm kind of burned out on launching, like on the launch kind of business model like you know opening doors for like a couple times a year um so I need to figure out what this is going to look like really because I haven't entirely nailed that down um in the past I've essentially used my courses um like running my courses to fund my writing um or my other creative work that doesn't pay the bills um but obviously that's changing now so just to let you know the story magic academy which is my course for writers is still up on my site there's a self-study version of it now um so that's still available and I don't have to run it like live anymore um I know there are people waiting on the next round of constellation clarity which is my course on like organizing and bullet journaling and um getting your life together um I'm still figuring out what I'm gonna do with that um so as soon as I know I will send out a notice in my newsletter basically so um yeah I'll let you know when I know so that's what I'm stepping back from um what I'm actually going to be focusing on what I'm going to be spending my time on and working on um going forward for the moment um part-time coffee work obviously as I've said um I'm really enjoying it it's really nice to just have like a stable kind of part-time income um, seeing people in person, doing something different. So yeah, that's that's going to be taking up about half my week. Um, and then writing and pursuing publishing. I have three big creative writing projects, um, creative slash writing projects. Um, that includes the Constellation deck and the guidebook. Um, I haven't been able to devote consistent time and energy to that um, because it's not immediately going to make money. Yeah, so now that I've got some more stability, I'm really excited to focus on that project and my other two mystery ones um, moving forward, like slowly but surely. I've actually got some really good rhythms going with my creative work right now and I'm really enjoying it. So that's great. I'm also going to follow my own advice and wait until things are done to talk about them more. Um, so I'm not going to, you know, reveal more of what those projects are. Um, but I will say, no, I'm still not going back to novels for anyone that was wondering. Um, and then third thing I'm going to be focusing on is Patreon. So I've actually paused my Patreon for the moment um, because I need to restructure my benefits and tiers and figure out how my workflow is going to work, given how things have changed, um, both working by myself um, since Chris Day's left now, and then also obviously working around my part time shifts. Um, so that's my main next work project is figuring out what the Patreon is going to look like going forward. Um, and hopefully that new setup will be live in the next few months. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And then lastly, things that I'm looking at for down the line, um, once I've got all these things sorted, um, client sessions. So I started offering one-to-one -one sessions um, fairly recently and it's been really great and I'd really like to continue with that. Um, I really love working with people in the one-to-one -one format and I don't feel burned out by this kind of work at all. If anything, I find it energizing. So 
Um, I need to figure out if it's possible to work a client calendar around my shift calendar. Um, but yeah, ideally in a few months, I'd like to open those up again properly. Um, and then I'd also like to keep working on smaller digital products um, that aren't courses like the Tarot and Lenormand companion journals that I designed in Notion. Um, so there might be more of that kind of stuff. Um, but that's only after I've prioritized, you know, the big the big writing projects. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's my update. That's what's been going on for the past year. Um, so yeah, lastly, I just want to say that if you've been here for a while, thank you for following my work and supporting me. Um, it's been a ride, <laughs> clearly. Um, I hope that you'll follow me over to some of the other places that I'm uh, creating not just YouTube, um, since it's going to be a bit quieter around here. Um, yeah, jump on the Patreon, go um, sign up for my newsletter. Um, but yeah, here's, here's to what's next. Okay, 